welcome back. We got some exciting news. My new friend, viewer, commenter, watcher, <laughs> Bruce in Idaho, who has been cutting out some stuff for me and working on getting some CNC things done for me. He has also started working on his own resonator. I sent him my plans and he's made some really cool progress. Check out this picture. He's got the top and the back. He's got the top all cut out. He's got the back shaped. Looks like he's got the curves on there. He's got the, the tabs bent over and he's got a celebratory drink and cigar there <laughs> to celebrate the progress that he's made so far. That's super exciting to me. I'm really interested in a bunch of people making these resonators and where we start to just get that information out there and flow in like it is with acoustic guitars and things like that. You know, there's so many opinions on wood types and grain orientations and construction methods and bracing and neck joints and blah, 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 blah about acoustic guitars and all that. And how does it affect the tone and this and that? I can't build these things fast enough to satisfy all of my questions that I have on what does what to the tone. So I'm hoping that just a bunch of people start making these things and we just start to learn, yeah, 22 gauge is way better sound than 20 gauge or maybe 20 gauge was better, right? Like we just need to answer these questions. Stainless steel gives you this, mild steel gives you that, brass, copper, whatever, aluminum, whatever it is we decide to make them out of and we just learn and start experimenting. I'm just looking forward to all that knowledge coming out and, and we start to just really get a grip on, yeah, what does the changes that we make to the build of these resonator guitars, what does that really do to the sound? Does it do anything? I'm sure there's lots of people out there that do know, but I don't know. And I feel like the general guitar public doesn't really know. So I'm super excited that Bruce has got this one build going. He's not particularly a guitar builder. Obviously, it looks like he's pretty good at stuff. So, you know, We'll see how that goes. One of the things, I've got a, a neck template here for Bruce. Um, Bruce wasn't super convinced on the neck <laughs> construction. And so I'm going to do a few little things and maybe I'll just transfer this to Corey and for him so that he has a neck template to build his neck from. So I got to get that thing finished up and in the mail to him. So I had a lot of production issues this week because I got a new garage door. You can probably see it in the background. One thing that's awesome about it is it has windows in the top and it lets a ton of natural light in here during the day. Because I got a new garage door, I had to move just about every single thing in here to a different spot to get it out of the way for the installers to do their thing. And because I had to do all that, before I put it all back together, I just took the opportunity to try and clean up a little bit. We are gonna get some work done today. I don't know that we're gonna get any guitar work done. What I really wanna work on today is a bandsaw modification that will help me cut out brass and copper on a bandsaw. If you're not into the tool build and all of that, just move on, <laughs> go find something else to watch. If you think it's cool how we're gonna to have to do some tool modification, and this is all gonna be an experiment to me. This is gonna be total trial and error. In my mind, I feel like I know what I want my bandsaw to do, but different so that I can cut mild steel and copper and brass on it easier and better and, and safer. So I know kind of what I want to do to my bandsaw, whether or not I can do that and get it to work good or not is a whole nother question. So I'm just going to do it with you guys in on video today and we'll all learn together if this is the right way to go to modify a wood bandsaw to cut metal. Yeah, that's about it for the news on the intro. Oh, no, that's not it. The other thing Bruce has done is he's, I shipped a bunch of, of brass to Bruce and Bruce started cutting out the tops for this build number three that we need to start working on. And look at this. This is beautiful. Like, I think, you know, I already showed you guys the CAD plan before, but we're going to work on a 12 fret. So attached to the body at the 12 fret with a cutaway version. And I don't know what we're going to do for grills yet. They'll have some sort of grills in there. But check out what Bruce did. Like, it's perfect. It's beautiful. Like, it's so, so good. I'm really excited to get these things in my hands and, and start working on them. The other, the other exciting news is there's a guy named Van, and he reached out to me quite some time ago. And it's just taken us, I think we're both busy, and it's just taken us a long time to work this out. But he has a bunch of tops. I think there's just tops. I don't know if he has any backs or not. I think they're just tops. He has a bunch of stuff from way back in the day that somebody had made for National. And for whatever reason, those didn't make it onto a guitar at National, or maybe they never made it to National. I don't know. He, he's, he's written up some history for me, and I'll tell you guys what the history is when I get these parts in my hands. But um, Van was just asking, do I want them? And I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, I want them. Like, even if I don't build anything with them, I want to see them just to see some techniques 
uh, there's so many things that I want to learn from these pieces. And they're just a cool piece of history. Whether we use them to build a guitar or not, they're an incredible piece of history. And so it's, it's going to be cool to share all that with you guys uh, and see what we learn from some of these original pieces that National would have used to build a guitar. I, I think Van told me the year that these were made, or maybe the era that these were made. He's friends with the person who made them um, and doesn't remember a whole lot about making them. So that tells me these are pretty old uh, pieces that we're going to get and look at, but I'm really excited to get these pieces and see them. Okay, I think that's it for the news. Let's get into bandsaw modifications. And if you don't like tool mods and working on tools and things like that, <laughs> we'll, see you, we'll see you next week. Oh, I don't even know about next week how much guitar work we're going to get done next week because next week's the road trip where I drop this guitar off to Django. And so I don't even know how much work we're going to get done on guitars next week either. Maybe I'll put together a road trip video. I, I don't know what that's going to be yet. Okay, now we're done with the news. Bandsaw mods, here we go. Boom. Okay, I have this old wood bandsaw, which I've had for a long, long, long time. Somebody actually gave it to me way back when. I've modified it heavily already. I took the original table off and I made this one, which sits quite a bit lower. And it turns out I like this table way better than the one that wasn't modified anyway. Because we're having to cut so much metal and stuff now, I'd really like to be able to do this stuff on the bandsaw. I'd really like to just slow this one down. Like right now it's it's a wood bandsaw, right? So it's, the blade speed is really, really fast. My original plan was to just take this box off of here, put a giant pulley on here so that it would slow it down. But I don't think that's even enough. I want it to go much, much, much slower. So I have this old motor. Well, I don't know how old it is actually, and I don't even know where I got it. But I have it. Now it didn't look this good a half an hour ago. I've already cleaned it up a bunch. It was looking pretty rough actually. <laughs> I mean maybe you think it still looks rough. But here's the key. Right here it says RPM is 60. I mean that's crazy slow. It's probably way too slow. I may need to put a bigger gear on here and then a smaller gear on here. Maybe I can use that gear on the motor yeah i bet i can i can probably put that gear on the motor and the small one on here and flop them and then i might be about the right speed like 60 is obviously way too slow it's a gear drive motor it's not like a regular motor like you would get on a table saw you know a modern table saw or something like that this thing's gear drive so all the gears in here and we're going to take this thing apart and see that everything's in good working order before we go ahead and use it but um when I first plugged it in, it was having start issues. Like I would turn on the switch and it would make all the noise, but this thing wouldn't turn. Hmm. Now that it's warmed up a little bit, it goes. So here we see it. Yeah. So you can see that thing's pretty darn slow. Like that's too slow, obviously. We gotta do some gearing stuff to make that not so slow, but we'll get to that. But I, I need to solve the start problem. So I'm going to take I'm going to take this thing apart, see what we got going on in the gear part. I'm hoping there's not a bunch of springs and all kinds of crap that just goes everywhere and I never get it back together. Who knows? And then I think this is just a regular, you know, copper coil wound electric motor. So probably just clean the whatever it is in there, the brushes or, you know, probably just clean all that up, take it apart and clean it all up and see if that solves my start issue. Let's take this thing apart and see if we can make any improvements to it. And if we do and we can and we feel comfortable about it starting and everything inside looks good, then we'll move on to taking the electric motor out of here. Uh, and we'll put that one in. We have to do some changes to the RPMs and maybe buy a belt or something, but I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge when we get down the road. It's kind of slow to start. When you turn it on, it wants to kind of, you know, it's like me getting out of bed in the morning. It doesn't really go that quickly. So I'm hoping there's something in here that's obvious on why that might be. Oh, I might have to take this pulley off of here to get this off, and that may never come off. Which I'm seriously doubting this pulley is gonna come off. It'd be nice if it did. I wouldn't mind putting a bigger one on there so that it turns a little faster. It's pretty slow. You guys saw. this apart. I'm assuming since this is a gear drive motor that there's oil in this part. 
And I'm also assuming that since there's oil in this part and this motor's old, that the oil is probably bad or, or dry or... I don't know. I really want to see in there. Half the gasket's on the bottom, half the gasket's on the top. That's not a good sign. I do have RTV, so we can solve that. Oh! Yeah. It's got some old yuck grease in it. It's probably fine. <laughs> I bet they don't make grease like this anymore. Okay, so now we know what's going on in there. I think the issues are going to be on the electrical side, motor's side. How come I'm dealing with grease so much lately? Okay, because this is just grease, we're going to ignore that this gasket's torn right there. We're just going to pretend we didn't see that, and we're going to move right on. Okay, we're filling. Okay. Man, I hate slotted screws. Like, it was a great simple solution, but they just suck. Did I just break that one? I think I did. Great. Okay. Did I break that one? No, that one didn't break. Fortunately, this thing isn't very complicated. It's just good old 50s technology. We're just going to clean up these copper windings in here. Put it back together and then hopefully that solves our startup issue. Okay, I don't see any reason why that shouldn't work good. Everything's good, armature's good, it's all good. Back together we go. Okay, now if it doesn't catch on fire, we're good. Okay. Okay, let's see how that speed looks. <laughs> That's so slow. I think with the small pulley on this shaft and the big pulley on the other one, I think that speed's going to be good. But we'll know here in a few minutes. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing. I wonder, I wonder if the bolt pattern here is the same as the bolt pattern here. It looks like it probably is. Those two are probably the same space. No. Uh-oh. This might have to go on a piece of wood first. No. We might have to put a piece of wood in there first and then attach this to that piece of wood that we put in there first because those are way different. Dang it. I was hoping this was going to be easy. Okay, it was easier to just take the vertical piece that holds the motor out of the base of the saw. That piece goes in there. The motor just mounts to this face. So what we can do is just, can we get this thing on here? And it looks like <laughs> it's not gonna work because I've got two holes that'll work there and then those two holes aren't there yet. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use two bolts to get it mounted and then get the tension right on the belt because this thing slides up and down to tension the belt. Once I get it all back in the saw and I get the tension right and everything's good, then I'll probably drill these two a little bit or file them or do something so I can get the other two bolts in there 
where they don't have to move. Yeah, that's my plan. That gets us back in the saw. So let's see if I can manage that by myself. This motor's heavy. Okay, so this motor from here to back here is quite a bit longer than that other motor. So I had to move this center piece over this way so the motor doesn't hit the side over here. And of course, they give you all kinds of slots for moving this thing and sliding it and adjusting it, but I need it right in the middle and there's no hole there. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to cut a hole there. I want to drill a hole there, but that shouldn't be a big deal. This is wearing me out. This thing's hard and heavy and awkward. Okay, I think my belt alignment is going to be fine. I don't think I have any troubles with that. I got plenty of adjustment there to make that good, but look at how far off I am on the height still. And I can only go up about that much, which I don't think is gonna be enough, which means there's gonna be more drilling and modifying to go on here. Okay, I was trying to take the switch apart so I could put it, you know, hook it to the old one and not have to have a new one. And somebody has used tar or something and put this all together. And I like this guy. I could have lunch with him any day. Look at that. It's all silicone and caulked together. It's got a nice piece of mahogany on the back. There's some screws going to I don't know what yet. <laughs> this, thing's, this thing's well built. I like this guy. Okay, I'm going to try and pry that thing off and, <laughs> and get the wiring done. Upon further inspection, I was going to use the old one and just run through the old system because it has an outlet tied into it and the outlet's convenient and I use it a bunch. But I noticed that I don't have a ground on this and I know that old motor probably wants a ground. And so this version that's all wired up and set up is grounded. It's already grounded to this metal box. It goes to the right place. It's all wired right. So I think what we're going to do is just use this for the switch now instead of the switch that's in the saw. So it might be slightly confusing. Maybe I'll try and take the switch out of the saw and put this in its place. Yeah, let's try and do that and then go from there. Maybe I can even wire, I mean, I could. I guess I could wire the outlet back into this. More work on this. This is gonna take me all day. That was maybe the hardest thing I've ever done. Okay, I think we're ready to test this thing. Am I nervous? Maybe a little bit. No, why would I be nervous? It's perfect. Okay, here it goes. Oh. I think that's a nice speed. Look at that is not fast at all. I don't, you probably can't tell. That is not fast. I'm calling that a win. I like that. <sighs> okay, I know that wasn't that guitar related, but it sort of is because I think now that this thing is going so much slower, I can easily cut the brass and copper on here without too much drama. It was way too fast before, like it was going really fast. And so super happy about the slow speed of it now. I think that's going to make it much easier to cut out this copper and the brass versions, which, you know, that's what we're gearing up to do. So I'm going to recover from that for a few minutes and then I'm going to grab a piece of that copper and I'm going to see how it cuts. I mean, that's the next thing to do, right? Okay, this is super thin brass. It's 0.032 inch thick, which is what I want to use when I make the brass one. I'm starting to wonder if maybe that's too thin and I kind of hope it's not because I just spent... I don't know, 400 bucks or something to send enough brass to Bruce up in Idaho to cut. And he's done that and it came out beautiful. But now I'm worried that stuff's pretty darn thin and it's, I don't know, we're going to see what happens. What, what I do need to know though is, will this thing cut it? I mean, I know it's going to cut it. Is it going to cut it clean or is it just going to make a mess? I've heard that um, it helps to glue this to a backer. If you're having it want to grab and tear and, and, and wreck the edge too much, that if you glue this to a backer, like just spray mount to a, you know, a piece of sacrificial 
um, plywood or something that you get a lot better result out of it. Of course I want to just try and do it without that sacrificial piece so let's just turn this thing on and see what happens. Yeah, just yeah. Well, that was way louder than I was hoping it was going to be. This is a pretty fat blade, so obviously I can't do very much turning. It cut it fine. It's clean. I think we won here. I think I can cut the outside shape of a guitar body now on the bandsaw. And I can even do all the, the tabs, you know? I can just burp, 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 do all the tabs. I mean, that was a lot of work to get the result that I was totally expecting and was hoping for. And now what? Am I ready to just cut the copper one? A little scary because that stuff's not cheap. Is maybe that's not enough testing? Maybe this maybe I need more testing? No. I mean we just did it. Okay, I think we should just see if the copper cuts any different. The one thing that's different about this copper than that brass is this is 0.04, so it's slightly thicker than the brass. I have a feeling the thicker this material, the better it's gonna cut. That thin stuff, man, it's just sketchy. You know what it almost feels like? It feels like the blade wants to grab that thin material and suck it down into the saw. Like it just, it just has a weird feel when you're cutting it on the blade. I have a feeling this copper is gonna cut way better than the brass. So let's just find out. Okay, one thing that just taught me is that that gear drive motor with the 60 RPM, <laughs> I could probably just stop that motor cold by trying to turn too tight. I, I think what's going to help me a whole bunch here would be to get a blade that's not so fat. I may try and pick up a blade that's not so fat before I try and cut one of these copper ones. That copper, it it's definitely has a better feel to it when I cut it. It doesn't, it, it just feels better than the brass. The brass just... I don't know, it's hard to explain. It just has a feel to it when you're cutting it that I didn't like that much. I think before I cut out the top, I'm going to get a different blade, which is a bummer for this video because I was kind of hoping to be done. I was kind of hoping to have a top cut out by the end of this video. And now it looks like I'm not gonna. Well, how do you guys feel about that bandsaw mod? I, I like the slower speed. I, I, it was way too fast before, so the slower speed's great. I have a feeling that you guys are about to hit me with a bunch of info in the comments that I wish I would have known earlier, but you know, you don't know what you don't know. Is this going to work? Are we going to be able to cut brass and copper on the bandsaw pretty easily and, and not have any issues and tear it all up? Or is it just not the way to go? I don't know. It's better than the shears because you know when you use the shears it always tears up one side. One side stays flat, the other side lifts and it rolls and it wastes a bunch of material. The cutoffs of these tops and backs when you do the outside shape that I want to do on the bandsaws, the cutoffs are important because you need the cutoffs to make other little bits and parts and pieces. And so I don't want them to be all trashed by the shears. So yeah, I'm really hoping the bandsaw will help me cut that stuff out. Thanks guys for watching. Next week road trip. I guess I'll video some of that. I don't know what we'll do, but I'll come up with something or maybe I won't have anything next week. I don't know. Okay, we're off to Oregon. Going to go see Django and Dane. We're going to drop off a guitar, and then we're hustling back here, and we'll back on this brass. Okay, thanks for watching.